And this is a Tyler with metgraphics.net and uh, today I'm just going to do a quick tutorial on uh, getting started with MG Maps and here I have open uh, norcalweather.net that's just my uh, you know forecasting website locally here in Northern California and um, I got a user request so I'm just going to try to uh, duplicate some of these features used on these maps here that I created for a post earlier in uh, January of course it's been very dry here recently, so there hasn't really been much to post about. So I'm, um, you know, going to be relying on some maps that are a uh, you know, month, month and a half old now. But uh, that don't matter. Uh, what we're going to be trying to do today is just try to c confine fills to a state. We'll start with that, and then maybe try to show you confining fills to multiple states. It's a very, it's you know, the same process, but we'll just add another state to that. And maybe try to do with this kind of jet stream here. I'm not sure if we'll get to that in this video, but we will see. Um, and maybe we'll try to also duplicate this key here. I don't know if we'll get to that either, but hopefully we do. So uh, I have MG Maps Lite opened up in here just to try to conserve some uh, system resources. You know, I have a fairly powerful computer here, but using MG Maps Pro while recording video here probably wouldn't work out too well so uh anyway we'll just start right now by adding in a low pressure symbol and i'm just gonna go to the mg maps folder here go to uh, the met symbol kits go to uh, pressure symbols number 13 pack that's the latest one and add let's see maybe the second one here and of course you can use or you know yeah use whatever one you want to use doesn't matter I'm just choosing this one because it's the latest one from uh, the symbol kit and um, how I'm or, you know transforming this is I'm just using control T on a Windows platform here and uh, using shift and alt to uh, click on a corner uh, dot there to transform the scale and keep it uniform and I'm scaling up right now because it was a little too small and we got this placed in there uh, I might as well add a front too we'll try to create as, uh, you know, as realistic of a map as we can despite there being nothing happening here in the west coast for the most part uh, front cold uh, with number four I suppose and then of course you're not going to have a Cold front that large with a low that small. Again, I'm transforming it with uh, Shift and Alt just to scale down the front uniformly. And then I'm dragging the cold front under the low just to create that proper layering technique there. Uh, and you can select multiple dot. I mean, multiple layers by. Uh, holding shift while you're selecting one and selecting your second one. That's how I'm doing that. And then we'll we'll live with this for now. Again, this ain't no real map. We're just using this as an example. So um, for the fill here, um, I'm just going to do a fill uh, confined to the, the, uh, the land itself for now, and then later on we'll do one confined to a state. So to confine a fill to just the land doesn't you know we're not worrying about states themselves right now you're gonna wanna control click the thumbnail of the blue marble layer down here in your base map and this will create a selection here of the land so uh, we're gonna keep this selection we're gonna create a new group and we're going to uh, create a mask from this selection so we have the selection here we have a group we're, we're clicking on the group and we're gonna click uh, you know, adds or yeah, add layer mask here, and that will have created a mask for this whole group. So any layer we have in this group will be masked to the land. And we're just going to make sure this new layer here is in that group by dragging the layer up into the group, and it's now part of that group. We're going to use the pen tool. We're just going to create a rough shape for some precipitation, you know, that you would expect with a storm and cold front like this. Do something like that. The pen tool is pretty straightforward to use. Once you use it a little bit, it'll make sense. I don't want to 
kill time explaining that and then we're gonna use a contents color fill for this and then just figure out what color you want to use that works for now and as you can see the uh, the fill is contained to the states here despite me having added some fill way out here just to create this boundary okay we'll add a secondary fill maybe for some more intense precipitation near the front and I'm using alt and my scroll wheel to zoom in well trying to here as you can see my computer is struggling a little bit with that Get a smaller fill here along the coast. We're gonna do another fill, and I made I made a new layer. Should mention that I dragged the layer above the first layer just so the next fill is on top of that. Most people who use Photoshop, you know, you you know about this, but if you're new to it or just trying to gauge whether or not you want MG maps, or you haven't used Photoshop before, you know, it's pretty straightforward. So now we have a secondary fill there, and as you can see, it is confined to the landmass here. So, let me see what else we can add to this. Okay, we'll add a little cloud layer here. What we're going to do is we're going to get out of this um, group so we're not containing the clouds to this. So we're going to create a new layer, drag this above our group or below the group, depending where you have it. We're going to file, place embedded in Photoshop CC. If you're not using CC, it can be, I think it's just file, place. It doesn't really matter. Go back to the Met Symbol Kit, go to the Pressure, oh no, no Pressure Symbols, we are looking for Spirals. Let these load up. Let's do ah, Cyclone 10, it doesn't matter. You could use whichever one you want, assuming you have access to this. <coughs> And I'm just going to, again, uh, Shift-Alt to uh, transform this a bit here. And I think that's, that looks close enough. And then I don't like to keep it as is. I kind of blur out the cloud features a bit. So we're going to go to Blur, Gaussian Blur. And uh, we definitely don't want that to be 110 or 112 pixels there. We want something kind of small just to smooth out the uh, cloud effects here. Uh, I think that's still too much. Maybe something around two or three would work. We'll go with four. It doesn't really matter. You can choose which whatever you think looks good. And um, I'm going to control T to transform this. And I'm going to rotate it a little bit by just clicking once outside of the box here and dragging down to tilt it as the direction you're seeing it tilt downward. Hit enter when I think it's proper to save those transformations and um, I'm gonna play with the uh, the uh, layer mode here and I'm gonna set up the screen and see how that looks. Try near dodge overlay just for the heck of it to see if that works too. And what I do a lot of the time is I'll make two layers, so I'm going to control J this to copy it. And I'll keep one on overlay, and I'm going to try one on screen. No, that's not going to work. I'm going to try linear dodge. We'll add. I'm going to lower the opacity of the overlaid one, and maybe lower this one up a little bit too. I'm going to select both of them again. I'm going to transform it a little more by control T or by you know, tapping Control T on your keyboard. I'm going to scale it down a bit, see how that looks. As you can see, I'm, I, my, my system's lagging a little bit just because I'm recording while doing this, so I apologize for that. And we'll try that. I scaled it down the road to the back, kind of the direction it was initially. I'm going to get or drop this overlay one to see how it looks. Maybe try just multiply. No, nah, that's not going to work. We'll go back to screen. And uh, well, we're going to live with that for now. I'm going to delete the overlay one. Overlay layer, I suppose. I'm going to create another new layer and make sure it's out of this. I'm just going to get a brush tool by clicking B on the keyboard. And uh, making it a little bit smaller by using the uh, left bracket. You can adjust your brush scale using that key bind or 
going up here to the settings and dropping the size by you know, lowering this little slider. I have white selected. I'm just trying to add a bit of a glow to this area here. So I click back there and I select overlay for this here. And I'm also going to go double click on the low feature here and add, oops, don't want that, and add a glow to it, a black glow just to create some contrast from the background. And I also have the glow we added behind that. I'm going to duplicate that just to make it a little bit brighter. There we go. So we have some nice contrast between the low and the glow behind it and the cloud feature. So, um, you know, this map to me, I would use this map as is. But let's go ahead and contain some of these GIS features. So we're going to open up the GIS and overlays group here. We're going to select on or select the interstate icons and confine them to a smaller area. So I'm going to grab the lasso tool by clicking and holding on this and then just selecting that, letting go on the lasso tool. And we're just going to make a selection of the area we want to contain the interstate icons to. So I'm going to start down here near, near San Diego. I'm going to drag up here to get I-15, I-80, I-84, 90, and then come back over here just to get to kind of the west coast. And now that we have the selection of these icons, we're going to make sure we have the interstate icons group selected, and we're going to make another layer mask. And you, as you'll see, when this updates, um, it'll contain all of them to that selection. So for the roads, we're going to go ahead and copy. Oops, yeah, we're going to go ahead and copy the selection we just made by holding Control on your keyboard and clicking on the thumbnail for the uh, uh, vector mask there, layer mask. I mean, and click on roads and create a selection here. And as you can see, this has created a mask of the roads so we don't have to worry about all the stuff going on in the interior west and great basin and whatnot um let's go ahead and contain the cities too we will ma have to make a new selection with this one just because this selection we made earlier as you can see it cuts through boise lewiston omac las vegas and so on so we will get the lasso tool again and we're just going to create an even smaller selection closer to the storm here, a theoretical storm. Again, make sure you don't clip over any cities so it doesn't cut them in half and whatnot. So I just selected them here around the uh, more coastal areas, closer to the coast at least, and we're gonna add a layer that mask that we just or that we're gonna use this selection here to confine the cities to that. So we're gonna click layer mask again. And as you can see, the map is starting to look cleaner and cleaner and more refined. I'm going to go to Outlines here, click on the National and State Borders. And now, this is the same thing I would do to confine fills to a state or states, but we're going to use um, a couple of state selections to confine the counties to the states. So, go ahead and click inside the states you're wanting to uh, confine fills or layers to. So I'm going to click on California and I'm going to hold shift and click on Oregon to select both of those. And uh, you could make the selection now, but I like to go up here to select, modify, expand, and do around one pixel because sometimes these um, state outlines can be a little fuzzy at certain layers and in certain regions. So by expanding it one you don't have to worry about that quite as much and now we're just going to go ahead and add that mask to the counties and as you can see they've been confined to uh, Oregon and California or whatever area you're doing while copying this perhaps and um, I think this is about all I'll do here I'm going to go ahead and open up just this California map I created using MG Maps. It's customized. I just added these uh, precipitation total areas to the, or adjacent to the city names. But uh, that that could perhaps be another tutorial. Um, what we're going to do here is disable this key I created. And what we're doing is just going to confine some fills uh, perhaps for precipitation to this here map. And it would be the same thing in MG Maps. This is the same layout for the most part, except for this one group up here that, that was the uh, 
precipitation key. So I'll disable that. I'll delete it just for the sake of this video. And um, as you can see, we have some of those interstate icons that are directly from MG Maps. They're in here still. <coughs> And we'll, let's just get started. So as you can see, I saved this map just to quickly create precipitation forecasts. And as you can see, the map effects has already been confined to California. But I'll delete that and redo it. So I'm going to open up the outlines group once again. Uh, this is the states. I think I just modified it slightly. So it wouldn't be called Layer 77. It would be called National and State Borders. Um, I'll just go ahead and rename it for the sake of the video once again. I'm just assuming most of the people watching this are new to this. So there we go. Um, and as you can see, the uh, counties are also already contained. Let's delete that. We'll redo it. Now rename this counties so you know it's counties. So again, make sure you have the magic wand tool selected and your national and state borders layer selected and click inside the state or states that you want to select so I'm going to select California if you're doing additional states hold shift and click other states but we're not doing that and again I'm going to go up here to modify expand and now that I'm zoomed in I'm going to go ahead and do two sometimes even three pixels but I'll do two for this yeah actually I'm going to do one more to round it up to three There we go. Yeah, we're just doing that again just because sometimes when you're zoomed in more, you kind of notice that the state outlines can be a little fuzzy and the fills you're creating inside of the selection can be a little funky. So uh, we're going to use this selection to confine the counties to California. Once again, by clicking on counties or whatever layer you're confining to a state outline, I mean a state selection, I'm going to go ahead and mask that. We're going to copy the same selection here to California by control holding control and clicking on the thumbnail for the selection and we're gonna add this here to the uh, map effects group or whatever group you might be wanting to contain your fills to so I'm gonna add a mask there and close this and now any fill inside this group here will be contained to California so I'm gonna grab the brush tool just for instance and create some precipitation or, or you know a, a a precipitation forecast that isn't quite accurate, you know, given it is mid-February and quite dry here. So, um, so I just selected the color. I did a light green. I have my brush. It's a soft brush, or you can even use the pen tool, whatever one you want to use. I'll do that in both ways here. Um, so I'll just go ahead and create this fill. And, you know, assuming this is maybe a hundredth of an inch of rain. Change the color to a darker green for the next fill. You know, I'm sure you know what you're doing when it comes to creating it or creating a you know forecast map, and then uh, add a little some darker green along the coastal areas here, maybe in the Sierra, you know, and get some yellow. And you can do this on separate layers. I actually recommend doing that. You know, each color on a separate layer. We'll do that for the yellow here. Okay. So that's just how you would do a, uh, you know, a fill with the brush. We're going to go ahead and do it with the pen tool just in case you want to go with a more refined or, you know, sharper outline. So I'm just going to create some fills with it here, or create a selection with it. And uh, the reason I'm making sharp outlines outside the state is because we don't have to worry about what shows up outside of this selection here. So you don't have to, you know, be very accurate outside of your fill area. So I have the selection here for inside the state. I'm going to right click, fill path, contents color, and how you get the color selection is you click on color, you click out of it again, and it'll bring up the, uh, it'll bring up your, your color picker here. So we'll just do a green, enter, enter, delete path, and to create a new layer for the next fill in this. Gonna add a fill for the coastal layers and coastal mountains and the Sierra. Bring it up into the north end of the valley here and then into the coastal hills. Yeah, we'll add the Bay Area for the heck of it. They like their rain. 
at least some of them. Right click, fill path, contents, color, select the new darker color or whatever color you want, depending if you're making a precipitation map, maybe a severe threat map, so on, so on. And we'll create one more here and do some yellow for maybe an inch or so of rain. Go ahead and add the add this region. Chances are you're not from California. If you are, you know what regions I'm talking about. Add the foothills and Sierra once again. Right click, fill path, contents color, yellow. And there we go, that'll do it. And as you probably know with the MG Maps, Pro Lights, any of them, 2018 model uh, version, as you can see, we have this um, this overlay for terrain in here. If you don't want that, the overlay here is just these ridges and whatnot. It's shadowing, and there's also some vague highlights for any terrain features, mountains, you know. So we're going to open the GIS and overlays, and it's right here. It's called Topo Overlay. It's also going to be here in light. Let's just close all this so it's not confusing. Here it is right here topo overlay and it's just barely visible here in the light version if you're zoomed in you can kind of notice the ridges and whatnot being overlaid on your fills and it's just to help people and you yourself figure out where the heck you're looking on the map if you're not quite sure but then again we have all these GIS features here so you should be pretty aware of where you're looking but it does make maps look nicer so uh, if you want to disable it just click the little eye feature there that drops it. The old versions of MG Maps used to look like this without um, the topo overlay, but uh, I definitely prefer having it on. Um, I think I mentioned I would show you how to do a um, the the new kind of look for a uh, a jet stream here. I'm gonna do that in the next video. I don't wanna get into anything too crazy for a you know getting started video but uh, hopefully this helps you get started with MG Maps everything I just showed you can be done in any version of MG Maps I was just using MG Maps Lite you know just to conserve some system resources but uh, yeah I hope this helped and I'll see you in the next video thank you for watching